first of all, how are you doing now after all you've been through health-wise? I'm doing <laughs> well. I mean, right now I'm going through all my 12-month checkups because it was February 13th of 2021 that I had my surgery. So, you know, I'm still doing a lot of tests. And as, as you know, and probably everybody's heard, you know, I had the setback with the COVID lungs and the whole work. So I wound up 13 weeks in the hospital. I shouldn't have been in there longer than two weeks tops. And uh, so recovery has been slow. And, and actually, I, I have not a big fan of exercising, but uh, I, I know I have to exercise more. But, you know, I'm getting better. I'm putting weight back on. Like I, I was under 200 pounds when I left, left the hospital. I think when I graduated from high school, I was 200 pounds. Like it, you know, I was 155 pounds going into grade nine. So it, it just, it's, I, I'm no, I was born to be a little bit heavier than, you know, what I was coming out of that ordeal. But yeah, you know, I'm doing well now and, and all the signs are like I'm getting better. It just, everything happened a lot slower because my lungs didn't get the, get the good quick start. But uh, yeah, I can't complain. You know, the nice thing is I'm alive. And I, I, if I hadn't had that lung transplant, I probably wouldn't have been around this summer to watch the horses race because I was, it's amazing. They say you go downhill very quickly with this pulmonary fibrosis. And I noticed my oxygen usage was going up really quick, you know, last December, last January. I've got shots of me going up to the uh, the barn to train horses in January and February. And I had like an oxygen bottle, you know, strapped, attached to my back. And it looked like I was going deep sea diving. And, uh, and I had the oxygen level up pretty hard because even sitting around training a horse, it was taking my breath away, but I couldn't give it up. And uh, so, yeah, so, I, you know, I'm feeling a lot better now. And then to have a season like we had in 2021 and win these beautiful three O'Brien Awards to keep comp my single one company from serious comfort is like, yeah, you just even my wife is so excited. So now she knows why I wasted so much money in this sport. But I've never seen her so excited about the horses. But she said, you know, George, you always knew I like to win. And you were always losing. So now that you're winning, I can kind of get interested in the horses again. So I said, okay. So we'll try to keep winning. But I'm doing well. Thank you. And what does it mean to you to see all of these horses that you've bred have a successful year and then top it off with these three O'Brien Awards? <laughs> you know, I, I think that's the key. I mean, it, uh, see ones that, you know, and these, all these babies we're talking about, except for one, we're all, uh, out of, you know, kind of traced back a lot to little black book and her daughter's catch a wish. And, and, you know, it's been a good, such a good producer for us, but, you know, to breed them yourself, I mean, I've got great daughters and I got great grandchildren, but you know, these mares, it's kind of like family. It's like seeing your kids go out and play sports and, and doing well, but, you know, it's funny. I, I, I've never had super high expectations. And I know I spent a lot of money in this sport. But I, I, I remember saying to Nick last year, I, uh, and when he was training down at two-year-olds, this whole crop, and, and I said, you know, Nick, I said, just remember, I said, I want to see you do well. But I said, if you could just take these 10 or 11 two-year-olds, and I said, if you could make like $250,000 combined, that would cover their training bill coming down. We'll make money with them as three-year-olds. So, but I said... Try to put two hundred fifty thousand dollars as a goal, and uh, and uh, you know I, I was such on the light side, and he did so well. So yeah, to see them do, I mean, th that breeders uh, breeder of the year award well, that was the most important award for me. And uh, and you know, the only thing that you know made me sad that night, everything I was so happy about is my father, who everybody knows, and your dad knew my father quite well. You know, we were kind of a team with the horses. We went everywhere before you know you could get them on TV and. You know, if you wanted to see a horse race, you had to be there. And my dad and I, we went to every race. Drove my wife nuts, but we went to every race. And, you know, for him, I mean, I hope, hopefully in spirit he was there. But uh, for him, I would just wish he could have seen it. But, you know, I think he had so, he just loved the horses so much. I think that's why he nearly made 90 on it. So it's, yeah, I, I missed that he wasn't there, but uh, it, it was such an exciting night. And for a, a virtual award night, I was surprised we had, we were probably a little over the limit here, but uh, I was surprised how well it went. It was produced great. All my staff, they all had their 1920s outfits on and, and uh, yeah, it was, it, it was, yeah, it was nice. But that, that, yeah, breeding them made it all special because we did buy some expensive yearlings that year and they didn't really, I think they'll be good as three-year-olds, but they, you know, it was all the homebreds that made all the money. 
and uh, and so what was your most memorable moment of the season and why was it so special for you boy there was a couple I, I think obviously I think probably the, the highlight was uh, the she's a great lady final with uh, Nikki Hill and uh, you know that that race could have turned out any different way like if you know, I always said, I said to James afterwards, I said, you know, James, I said, if you pulled early and gone to the front, you know, you knew Nikki Hill was going to come and take the lead. And we would have been sitting in the two hole and all we had to do was pop out. And, uh, but she wound up getting a, a long first over journey. And I, I was shocked when she got halfway down the lane, she was like a half a length in front. And I don't think anybody got a half a length in front from Nikki Hill all year once she got the lead. And then, you know, Nikki Hill, like being the remarkable horse she is, I mean, I, I haven't seen a two-year-old filly do that before. She came back and, and not only came back, she came back and won by a length. Like she was just, just like she was so dominant. But, but I, you know, I'm, I'm looking, that's one of the race I'm looking forward to, you know, matching up again. Like you have to have the right trip because that's obviously the best filly in North America. But, uh, you know, I think if we were sitting on a helmet and uh, had to come out at the three-quarter pole, could have been a different outcome. But, you know, I just like to see what the outcome is going to be. And then I think the, the next race was North American Cup night when, uh, you know, we obviously didn't pay that cold up to the North American Cup for lots of reasons because of his injury. And, uh, but seeing him win in 48 and two and, and the North American Cup only going in 49 and three, that was, you know, uh, yeah, that was pretty exciting that night too. But, but you know what? I love my horses and all homebreds, but I've got this little quote called my blueberry buck. And he won from, he was at Grand River, and he was the only horse that year. I think there might have been one other later on in the year, but he won from the eight hole. Like, he was really tiny, and he was, uh, I can't remember what stuff. He wasn't from a very popular stallion, and uh, I think he died thinking out loud. And he was, like, a bit of a runt. But, boy, I tell you, if you had the heart this little guy had, so I think that was my third favorite. It was, a, it was just a grassroots sire stakes, but I loved him to death. Absolutely loved him to death. And... Uh, and he's still here on the farm. Nick wanted, he sold a lot of my horses and he wanted to sell that one. I said, nah. I said, we'll talk after the three year old year is over. But I said, I'm still very content having a nice grassroots horse. And uh, so, it, yeah, it's, yeah, well, it, there were so many good high points this year, but you, if you got to pick two or three, those were, and you know, it's one of them was a grassroots race, which my wife would just say, what a loser. But, uh, <laughs> but I like it. You got to go with what you like. And your finalists all had incredible success in the Ontario Sire Stakes program. From a breeding perspective, what works in the OSS program and how would you like to see it evolve? Boy, I don't think you can change anything. You know, I couldn't believe because all my mares were nominated for Breeders Awards. So, and I've never won that much money on my Breeders Awards before because, you know, my two year olds, they never made that much money in the Sire Stakes program. But I, I tell you, I'd be embarrassed to tell you how much I got my Breeders' Awards this year. Like, it, it was enormous. I don't think there's any other jurisdiction that pay out Breeders' Awards like uh, we, uh, like our Ontario Sires pay out. And, and, you know, we had a remarkable year in the Ontario Sire Stakes, but, and even in some of the Grand Circuit. But I, literally, when they told me how much money the check they were sending me, I said, you must have added on a few zeros by mistake. But it was ridiculous how much it was. I'll never breed outside of uh, Ontario again. You'd have to be crazy. I think we have the best program in the world. I mean, if we got a good horse, we don't have to travel that far. And my Breeders' Awards, I, I tell you, they were about, they were at least a, they were at least 40% of what I made in the Sire Stakes program. Like it was huge. So it's, uh, yeah, what it would, I don't think, you can't change anything. You can't, I wouldn't say enough. I wouldn't change a single thing. Your farm produced horses in 2021 that raced with the Grand Circuit's best as well. Is Ontario getting closer to leveling that playing field when it comes to raising the quality of its broodmare depth, or do you still see that as a concern for Ontario breeders? No, I don't think it's a concern at all. I mean, you look at Lala Shadow. I mean, he won the Meadowlands Pace. Uh, I mean, I think Ontario bred horses can go with just about anything out there. And, and you know, we did race you know, in the grassroots this year. And, uh, you know, and uh, I think I had, I had a Colt finish second in the, in the grassroots final. And he cut a mile out in 49 and one and got beat by a nose. And I'm thinking, you know, and that's another highlight. I mean, to have a homebred 
and, and, and do that. And I'm sitting there going, wow, like, but it, it just shows you, like, to be a good grassroots horse, you have to pace 151, 149 to 151 to have a good grassroots horse, or you might as well give them, and it's nice that they got the prospect series, but they go all over the place for $6,500. So, you know, it's good for the smaller breeders, and, you know, I can't afford to, you know, truck my horses all over the place or something like that. But it gives us a way, if you got a lesser horse, you can sell them off or something. But, but uh, yeah, it, it just, our, our horses can pretty well go, uh, uh, you know, with any horses. I think Century Pharaoh was, wasn't he in Mach 3? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, and, and we don't have to pay four, five, six, seven hundred thousand for them. I, I, I don't know what the trotters, maybe it's a little different, but when I looked at that Mohawk Million, they, uh, I mean, when you look at the finals, look at dual result. I, I mean, he was just, uh, you know, a, a short bit out of being venerable and even being in that class because, you know, she's obviously an outstanding horse of the year. Uh, you know, it, it's like we're, we're close. Yeah, we're, we're close. We're better. And, uh, but it's, and they're finding that out because if you look at a lot of, you know, the big stake races and, and you look at the horses that made it there, they're, they weren't expensive horses. And uh, the yearlings, they, you know, they were just nice average yearlings. They were probably they had a good trainer, but uh, a lot of good Ontario breads. And, uh, that's why I'm so happy they got the Breeders' Crown at Mohawk this year. Because I said, Nick, I said, I don't care what you say, we're staking everybody. <laughs> and I know it's early yet, but at this point, which one of your two-year-old prospects are you most excited to see debut this season? I think Save the Last Dance and uh, Honey Love. Are the two that I've sat behind that I really like. There's a couple I liked earlier, but they're they're a little bit ouchy or something right now. Nick's working on them, so. Uh, but those two I, I really like. There was a few more there that I liked. Uh, we got some nice trotters, but Nick, what what doesn't like you driving the trotters? So you must know something I don't know, and I don't really care about driving the trotters. I like the uh, trotters nice and they're quiet. I got no problem, but uh, but Nick's very protective of them. I so I don't think he has enough confidence in me to drive a trotter. And actually, I don't blame him. That's probably why he's a good trainer. Of your horses that were not O'Brien Award winners in 2021, which do you think is primed for the biggest season in 2022? I would definitely say Powertrain. Powertrain, I think he, you know, I, I think he could have been close to being nominated this year, except we had an issue with him, you know, with going off stride. He started up at Georgian Downs, but that track, they had that big rainstorm. The one turn got washed out and it was kind of loose, but I think he had some issues bothering him a little bit. Not not the one that stopped him from racing earlier, but something else. But and then it followed up. He made another break for us. I think the race afterwards, but then Nick seemed to find a problem and and got him uh, you know corrected. But I was surprised that that night he went in 48 and two. And Nick was wears a long hobble on our horses, all our horses. And he told me the other day, he said, you know, George, he said, when he went in 48 and 2, he said, he wore a 56 in Bob. I said, he wore what? I mean, he wasn't thinking, like, you know, a horse can go 48 and 2, usually has a longer hob than 56 inches. And because Nick had kept taking it in because he was making the breaks. But I, but I think, you know, he's just got such raw speed. And, uh, and I, you know, Nick, Nick's very hopeful. Which race would you most like to win as an owner or breeder and why? And normally I'd say go cup and saucer. I don't even care about the little brown jug anymore. I think that's too tough. I think I think you're willing to horse the little brown jug now with the two races and how fast they're going. But uh, you know, I finished I, I won a leg at the North End Cup one time and I think I finished third with Sue Don. Actually he was the first foal of Little Black Book. And, and and that was Sue Don was a half sister to half brother to catch a whip. There's no nukes. But I, I think it would, you know, if we could get a shot at the North Grand Cup, that would be nice. I don't think we have the power for that right now. But, you know, she's a guy. I mean, we're, we've been doing really well with Phillies. So, I, I obviously, the win Eric in the Philly race would be great. So, the She's a Great Lady or uh, the Penny Hanover or something like that would be really nice. But, I, you know what? I don't know. We win the Sire Stakes would be awesome. Uh, I mean, I went from winning, you know, a lot of grassroots races and, and maybe the odd gold to winning 11 gold events last year. Like it was crazy. And uh, so you still try to absorb all that and say, 
am I still just hallucinating from my surgery? Or did this actually happen? Because I was hallucinating a lot for about couple, six weeks after my surgery, so I didn't know all this was true. And, uh, but yeah, once, once you kind of know it's true, I'm thinking, well, still all the drugs I'm on, like maybe I'm gonna wake up and this didn't really happen. But, but now I know it happened. Thank you.